have an incredible feel-good story for you all today. My next guest on StansburyInvestor.com was basically stranded and lost at 30. She had found herself uh, without a job, a high school diploma, and no idea how she was going to feed her four young kids. Fast forward to today, she is a self-made multi-millionaire. She is the general partner of District Ventures Capital and the CEO of Venture Communications. She also happens to be the star of Canada's Dragon's Den. She's come a long way and has a lot to share, and it's a real honor to have her on today. Please welcome Arlene Dickinson. Arlene, nice to finally have you on the show. All right, Danielle. It's been it's such a pleasure to be on the show with you. Like, I'm just I'm honestly, I was so excited when you reached out. I thought, oh, yay, I could, you know, because I know you've had the other, some of the other dragons on and I, I was feeling a little left out. So <laughs> Absolutely. please, no, not at all. It's just a question of timing. And I'm happy that we were finally able to connect. And, and you have such an incredible story to, to share because I, to the intro, I wanted to, to also add, you're the best selling author of, of multiple books, including your latest is Reinvention, Changing Your Life, Your Career, Your Future. And that's a little bit about what I want to talk about with you today because you're really those success stories that we love to to hear about right um and you know we see you now and you're successful and obviously you've made millions but we don't see the road it took to get there right and that's a lot of times that's what happens we put you entrepreneurs on this pedestal and think we want to be like you but we don't we didn't see the backstory so tell us a little bit about your journey Arlene yeah, it's true. You know, we for, we forget that every everybody's gone through some kind of a you know um, life changing moment to get where they are, or multiple life changing moments. And in my case, you know, when I was thirty years old, I I had no education and I had no money and I had no real skill to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I think that when you're in these situations where you get pushed into trying to you know solve for yourself. In other words, how are you going to put food on the table? How are you going to put a roof over your head? You you put yourself at more risk. You try things that you might not normally try. So because I was in that situation and I got into marketing just simply by chance, it led me into kind of a career that's evolved and changed. And, and I found through that those changes and that evolution, um, a strength um, that I didn't know I had. Um, you know, I, up to that point, I'd been a mom with four kids and I, I didn't really have a lot of confidence. And, but when I got put into a situation where I had to come out fighting basically to help make sure we were okay, I realized that I had more strength than I knew. And I realized that it was up to me to figure out how I was going to make it work. And so when you start to depend on yourself more, I think you find what you're capable of. So I, it's been a journey. It's been an interesting inner journey as much as it has been an outward journey in terms of my career path. Yeah, I mean, it's such, an, such a feel-good story. And, 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 and I wonder if you found with the other entrepreneurs you've met or super successful people, if there's a certain personality trait um, that you find is really the common denominator. Because yeah, it takes an element of, of chance, of luck, but what you do with that opportunity and that personality. So was that ambition always there, that drive always there, Arlene? No, it wasn't always there. It really only became uncovered when I started to be an entrepreneur. And I realized that I was an entrepreneur. I didn't, up to that point, I hadn't thought about starting my own business. But as soon as I had my own business, I realized that it was what I was loved and what I was passionate about. And um, and, and it gave me purpose. You know, I, I spent, I for me, being an entrepreneur as a marketer when I started was about helping other people's businesses succeed. And so if you when you ask kind of what do people have in common, I think there's an iron will there's a tenacity and a persistence. Um, there's a, a belief in a, a vision that nobody else can see and you hold tight to that. I think these are common elements of, you know, people who have a, a vision um, and a belief, but also this iron strength that comes from being able to put the negativity aside and carry on. So you, you had that first um, real moment at 30. And then again, it happened again later on in your okay. life at 57, about the time that um, your, your book came out, where you had to, again, um, overcome the hurdle of change and, and, and start over. Can you tell us a little bit about, about that point in your life? A hundred percent. It was like, so I, you know, you, as an entrepreneur, I had been building this marketing company and I'd been dabbling in, in investments and, and certainly investing outside of that business. And I was doing all these other things. I was on the show. I was all you know busy and life was good. And then we had this flood hit in Southern Alberta that basically wiped out my office and wiped out my business literally. Um, and so it was at that moment where I thought I could just quit or carry on. 
And it is such a timely story for today. I mean, you had the flood, but so many people's businesses have been wiped from the pandemic. So for those watching this, you know, Arlene is such an incredible uh, a mentor and testament that you can overcome this. So for those small business or medium-sized businesses that were completely wiped, um, what's your message to them, uh, Arlene, in overcoming change and maybe trying something new or just rebuilding? When that flood happened, I had two choices. One was to shut down my business or the other was to reinvent it. And I chose the path of reinvention because I really wanted to take advantage of all the things that I built in terms of leveraging, but also to save the jobs and, and the careers of the people that had come along with me. And so it was an opportunity to reinvent myself and my business. And so what I'd say to you is, don't lose the good from the past. You know, there's even though the pandemic has been incredibly difficult and so hard, take what you've learned and reshape it and remold it into something that is good for today's context. And you will be able to get there. You have to rethink yourself. You have to rethink what's going on in the world and you have to be willing to take risk again. And that can be hard, but you can do it. It can be really hard. And I just want to bring up a, a quote of yours uh, from the past, Arlene. Um, I've had Kevin O'Leary multiple times on this show. And, and, and one thing you've said is, you know, O'Leary has this notion that greed is good. I mean, he's kind of built this persona around, yeah, greed is good. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's a fine line between, you know, greed and ambition. Yes. Um, uh, greed is not good. Greed is greed never it never amounts to a, a world of equality. It never amounts to a place where people are allowed to succeed based on their own terms. It, it greed is greed is selfish, and so I look at it as you know capitalism. I think is fine, but it needs to be capitalism with a heart. You don't have to be a capitalist and, and ignore other people's needs and wants and, and desires. You, you can be an entrepreneur, create economic value for yourself, but also for the community you live in, for the nation you survive in, for the world that requires you know, entrepreneurs to build and continue to help fuel economies. So no, I, I completely disagree, as I have in the past with him, um, that greed is not good. It is, uh, in fact, in today's world, I say it's the exact opposite. More and more people are looking at things like, you know, we see um, Bezos going out into space or, or um, Branson going to space, and, and we all think, what would you have done with that with that money to I like, thought so. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> well, I thought good. so. I mean, it's cool, but I, you know, um, yeah, to, to that point. Like, does anybody uh, really need hundreds of billions of dollars? No, the answer is no. And, and, you know, you, like I mentioned, you're the best selling author of, of various books, one of which, um, is being turned into a, a drama series about your life, right, Arlene? <laughs> yeah. So my first book, uh, called Persuasion, it was about the early days of my life, the things that I talked about very briefly about when I was 30 and starting out and what had it come from. And I, I uh, had a production company reach out and say they wanted to um, commission it to turn it into a television series, um, a drama about kind of, so it's based on fact, but it's going to be also fiction. And I'm so excited about it because it's going to be about a strong female entrepreneur who goes through all the crap that I've gone through. Right? Do we know who's been cast to play you or we can't say? Not yet, but I, we, we're, we've we got some ideas and I'm super excited. Can't say yet, but I'm super excited about it. Yeah, very, 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 very cool. Um, Arlene, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, in, investing in, in, in these current times. Can you share a little bit about um, sectors you're liking or, or looking at right now? Yeah, for sure. So I run um, a, a fund, District Ventures Capital, and my fund uh, invests in the food and health space. And in particular, I'm focusing on that, those spaces because I think that is, A, it's a, a global need, um, and B, it relies on, you know, uh, local economics in order for, to fuel growth. So I love the food space. I mean, if the pandemic taught us nothing else, it taught us how important food, food security is, food Absolutely. safety is, right? Uh, like knowing where my, can I get toilet paper? Can I get milk? Can I get anything that I need? So food is not just a, a need in this country, but it's a need globally. And so food, I think is a, a, a huge opportunity. And then health. Health again, if the, what did the pandemic teach us? That we're only as good as our, our, our health, right? And so I, I say the food and health space are really underestimated and that's where I would focus my investments. And, and you know what I find interesting because I, you know, I, have the, I have the joy and the luck of interviewing extremely successful people every day. 
um, that they more and more are having their own gardens, um, you know, greenhouses or buying land in remote areas. And I'm thinking like, maybe I should be doing the same, but this is a real trend here of people going back back to basics almost early yes and we we're all realizing that you know knowing where our food comes from understanding you know the efficacy of what we consume realizing the impact on our bodies when we eat something bad it actually hurts us and and creates a, a impact on the healthcare system so yeah i mean i've got i've got a, a, a some land and i have a huge garden and i can things danielle i do like i can i jam i bake bread <laughs> I, I and i love it it's kind of I used to have to do it because I had no money. And now right. I do it because I understand the value. So it's amazing because my father has been gardening his whole life and I would ignore him. After the time. He'd be like, come see my tomatoes, come see my cabbage. <laughs> like, yeah, dad, whatever. And now that I find myself in Montreal, I actually want to learn. I want to tag along. And he's like, you know, get out your, you know, out of my space. <laughs> but I wish I had listened sooner. So I was like, you were onto something, you know, 30 years ago. So well, we're also so enamored by the technology, by tech companies and, you know, the, the unicorns and stuff. And I just, I just bring it back to the basics. You know, what do we need to survive? Well, yes. we need food in our health. And yep. so I think these are the sexy upcoming sectors. So to that point, like I said, you're a star on Dragon's Den. Now I believe in its 16th season that you've just wrapped. Um, when you're, you know, looking at pitches or companies, are you looking at those specifically that align with your interests? So do you prefer the ones that are food focused or uh, health focused? Yeah, definitely. I'm looking to invest in the food and health space and food, health and personal care. I mean, those are the sectors that my fund invests in. Um, you know, we're just about to raise our second fund and we're focused on continuing to build out this ecosystem. How about when it comes to speculative plays like like the cryptocurrencies? We talk so much about it on this show. Um, any interest in that space? I don't. I don't understand it enough to, you know, like I believe in investing in spaces that you really understand really well. I mean, I, I've listened to so much about it and it's still enough of a mystery to me that I don't quite understand where I'd invest. You know, like there's just not everyone says it's the future and it very well may be. But I think it needs to settle out before I would understand where to put my capital to play. And, and finally, to those entrepreneurs and investors watching um, during uh, during these times, any any words of, of advice here, Arlene? Yeah, um, you know, I always get asked what would I tell my 16 year old self or my younger self, and I and my answer is that it's going to be okay. And you know, like as hard as it is, I, I truly believe in the the ability to, of humanity to survive and to overcome and to find a way forward as a community. And if nothing else, this pandemic has taught us how important we are to each other. So it's going to be okay. I, I, I believe that. I just want to touch on social media because you're very active on Twitter. I love following you there because we really get to see your personality that maybe we don't see so much on Dragons Then You're, you know, extremely sarcastic, witty, funny, <laughs> but you also use the platform for, for a lot of good, um, which, 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 you know, hats off, off to you, uh, Arlene, for that. So um, I think you're, you're proof that, yeah, social media, there is still good in social media. If, you know, we have an obligation as people with um, platforms, yourself, myself, anybody with a platform where people listen to us and they, they pay attention to things we say and do, we have an obligation to use that platform to direct it towards things that are important, you know, things that are going to help others, things that are going to um, put focus a spotlight on what matters in this world. And so I get, um, I think, Social media gives me that opportunity. The television show gave me the platform and social media gives me the opportunity to amplify that platform into things that matter to me. And I think it would be a shame to not use it for that. And, and one of your recent tweets, uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, I loved it because it was like tongue in cheek. You were saying, you know, you brought up university. Uh, mm -hmm. You did not go to university and you said, hey, you know, is it hard, by the way? Um, so my question to you is, do you think that degrees uh, will be irrelevant one day. Do you think there'll, there'll not be a need to go to college? I think that the universities and the colleges have to change their curriculum, as do schools, as do just, you know, um, um, elementary and high schools, junior high schools. They have to change the curriculum to be more real life. You know, there's so much theory, but there isn't enough practical um, information and, and practical training. 
So do I think it's critical in some in some cases as a, a doctor? Sure, you need a degree. You know, in scientists, you need a degree. You know, there's certain places of, of uh, professions where you need degrees. But in terms of, you know, the rest of the world, I've hired people with science degrees and marketing. I've hired people without a degree to, you know, to work in in um, in in diligence. So I think you can get you can get hung up on degrees. It's all about the person's attitude and aptitude. And you, what do they say? You can teach um, you can teach a person any skill, but you can't teach them, you know, the you know the basic good judgment and and common That's sense. Right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Uh, really good thoughts, Arlene. I appreciate you coming on today. And happy birthday to your mom, everyone. Please join me in wishing Arlene's mom Thank a very you. happy birthday uh, tomorrow. A milestone birthday, I believe. Yes, 90. And that, that means so much to me. That almost makes me cry. So thank you. Yes. Well, thank you, Arlene. And thank you all for watching. We'll have much more for you. So be sure to stay tuned to Stansberry Investor. In the meantime, remember to register at DaniellaComboni.com for premier access to a lot of great videos and um, a lot of other very cool stuff. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. I'm Daniela Comboni. <laughs>